What's going on guys? G2 here. Welcome back to the bench. And today I have something special. When it comes to components, I've got a box, I've got organization for all these extra components that we have as we finish builds or maybe we inherit things and why it's tempting to throw that stuff out or I hang on to it because you never know. You never know when you're going to need it or you never know what thoughts may come to you and you're like, hey, let's try that out. Today, we're talking about this. The standard issue AR-15 grip. It comes in every lower parts kit. Chances are, if you're into building or you're into ARs, you probably have five or so of these laying around. And I'm going to show you three pretty cool things that you can do with this to make it way better, way more aesthetically pleasing than a hunk of plastic. So if you're watching this video and you're not a subscriber, take a minute, join the community. Hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you're alerted every time I upload new content. If you're one of us, thank you, welcome back. This is gonna be a pretty cool video and I know you guys have these laying around. If you're like me, you got eight of them and you don't know what to do with them. All right, I'm gonna show you. We're gonna do an example here on, I'm using a basically a non-functional firearm YouTube. This is not a lower receiver. Okay, it's a paperweight, just so we get everything clear. So these guys come just like they are. They are a, uh, a multi-layer polymer plastic. They have been in use since the AR-15 was created. They have fibers in there for strength and durability. And yes, they're great. Okay, they're not great. Yes, they work. Yes, they're durable, they can take a beating, and they do the job that they were intended for, but they're ugly, sometimes they're uncomfortable, sometimes they're too small for your hand, and sometimes they just don't look good or match the build that you're trying to do, but fear not, you can get around this. The first thing that I'm gonna show you is, I've, I've showed this before, but I feel like this is totally part of this process, and I think you guys will really like that. And it's this right here. So if you remember our Ranger Band video, where essentially we used an old inner tube from a bike right here. Uh, I picked them up at the bike shop. You can go to Walmart and get a whole inner tube for $3.99. And you can use that tube for Ranger Bands or for securing things, but you can also use them to create grip, grippy type surfaces on your grips, on um, your stocks, whatever. And that's all we did here is we cut off a section of that and we just put it right over top of this. And now you can see one, the first thing that it did is it increased the, I hate to use this word, the girth of the grip. So now if you have larger hands, you feel like you've got a little bit more to hold on to than this little pencil, you know, right here. So in addition to this, you can add layers underneath to increase that, that width. You could even add, if you like to have index points on your grip, you can add pieces of rope in here. You can do tons of things to layer over top of these. And the good thing about it is it doesn't look anything like this. I think it has that little bit more of a battle style look as opposed to this, which just looks like you got it off the shelf. So in addition to function, it also will kind of make your rifle look a little bit more badass. I mean, rubber bands wrapped around a rifle, that's, that's pretty badass. And on top of that, if you guys don't know, this bike tube is great fire starter. So if you're ever out there in a pinch, you need something to start a fire, this thing burns wet, it burns hot, and it burns long. You can use it for smoke signals, whatever. Things are endless, really, as what you can use this for. So that's the first thing. 
The second thing that you can do is paint it. So here we did basically a hydro dip. And in addition to that, what we also did was, you can see we got rid of that little finger well here, which is super annoying for me. I hate that. Because when you're holding this, it's like, I don't understand what the purpose of that was, but uh, someone felt it was a good idea to have that. I don't like it personally. What we did on this example is we just took it to the belt sander. You can use your Dremel, you can use whatever, and we just ground it flat. Uh, we also used it to take away some of the, uh, the grip on here. So you can see it's not nearly as textured as this one. So it's a little bit sm softer, smoother, uh, a little bit more ergonomic grip. Uh, it is now smaller, whoa, because we've ground away at it, but look at the difference. You've got this here compared to something like this, which looks a little bit more different. You can customize the paint to whatever the theme is of your rifle. We did the hydro dip. So if you're unfamiliar on how to do that, stay tuned because you may see how we do it. And all in all, we were able to transition something like this into something that looks a little better, a little more aesthetic pleasing. If you have smaller hands, now this is really good for you. For our third one, we're actually gonna do this together on the video. And what we're gonna do is, we're going to combine our hydro dip with stippling. So it does have stippling on here already. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you how you can stipple this to make this a much more aggressive grip. And it's very, very easy. You guys can do this at home. Uh, the first step that we're gonna do is, since I don't like this finger well, we're gonna do just like we did here, take it to the grinder and grind it off. So just to knock off this little finger well, whatever this is here, finger stop. Uh, we're just gonna use the belt sander. You could just as easily use a Dremel. Uh, this is just gonna be a lot quicker for us. And we're just gonna knock it off real quick. So I'm gonna put it on mute so you don't hear this craziness going on. And I think you guys get the idea. So just using whatever grit sandpaper you have, Get the most aggressive first, knock it down, get everything nice and smooth, and then work your way up uh, eventually to something like a 500, and then get it all nice and smooth here so it is uh, finished and it feels good in your hand. So feel it as you go through. If you find spots that you don't like, just buff them out uh, and get it to where it fits your hand the way that you like it. A little bit of sanding and we've got this to a nice smooth finish. It looks good. It feels good, which is the most important thing. When I get this on here, feels nice to me. Next thing we're gonna do is dimple it. So I'm sure you guys have seen dimpling videos all over YouTube and how to do it and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but essentially what dimpling or stippling, I guess is the correct term, what stippling is, is we're gonna use something hot, right? In this case, just gonna use a good old soldering iron, nothing special. And you make marks or indentations in the plastic, typically in a pattern. You don't do it randomly, you go along the lines and you make those marks to create an aggressive surface for grip. I've seen this on Glocks. They love to stipple Glocks. They love to stipple magazines, things like that. And depending on what kind of tip you use, I guess my only tip for lack of a better term uh, for you guys is depending on what kind of tip you use will result in a different kind of pattern. So if we were to use this tip right here, we would have basically the pattern of the edge of here. So it would be kind of like a half round. If you use something uh, like this, and let's say we use this tip and we just went on the sides, create kind of like a line pattern. Or if we use pretty much a sharp tip, we can make those sharp tip stippling points that you see on Glocks all the time. So I think for this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with the half round. Now bear in mind, you will ruin your tip. So if you use it for soldering, uh, get a, go get a replacement tip, they're like four bucks, and just you're just gonna heat it up, 
and we're just going to melt and melt and melt. Follow a pattern. Have something in your mind as to how you want this to go and then stick to that pattern. And it's really that easy. Okay, so my first tip on this is make sure you have it in something secure. So we have it in our little vise here. It's flat. Uh, so we can, you know, kind of work with this without it moving around on us. In this case, we're just going to follow the already textured part of here. And we're going to go, we'll probably go in a diagonal. And the second tip is to go slow and take your time and remember and stick to your pattern that you have. This is a great way to practice your stippling. If you've never done this before, doing it on something like this is a great practice method because these are super cheap. Uh, you can go through, if you mess up, it's no big deal. You mess up on a Glock frame, you're gonna be a little angry about that. But something like this, no big deal no problem you can just as easily replace it or you know screw it just use it anyway whatever it's a it's a it's a grip so i will time lapse this so you guys aren't destroyed with time and we get this video done pretty quickly So with that done, here we go. You can see here, now we stippled around there. I did a little bottom here for the uh, for my finger. I kept this part, you know, fairly smooth because I don't want to have a lot of texture there. And then also on the back strap here, I just did half of it. It's super addicting, guys. Once you start doing this, you're not going to want to stop. You're going to like, well, let me do a little bit here. Let me do a patch there. It's really easy. You can't really mess this up. Um, unless you're going for a particular pattern. But you can see now how aggressive this grip is. I mean, it's sandpaper. We don't quite want it this much, and that's kind of kind of what is going to happen. Uh, so to knock off some of these high spots and to not turn your hand into a cheese grater, turn this into a cheese grater, you're going to grab that sandpaper that you originally used, and you're just going to very lightly go over this and just kind of knock off those high spots until you get it to a, a point where um, it feels good for you. So I'm going to knock off some of these spots and we're going to paint this guy and we're going to hydro dip it. So I'll meet you back. Hydro dipping. It's basically water with spray paint on top of it. And as you lay the item in there, whatever you're painting, the paint will adhere to the item off of the top of the water and paint it. The key to this, there's a couple tips for you guys. So the first one is you want to use a big container. You want to make sure that you can fully submerge your item into the container. So you have to have at least double what you would normally think you needed. The second thing is you need to have this secure onto something. It can't twist, turn, whatever way you put it in. It has to stay in that position, otherwise you're gonna mess up your pattern. The key here is room temperature water. Cold water will make the spray paint cure quicker and kind of get brittle. Hot water will make it really goopy and soupy. And I found that room temperature water is the best. Shoot for somewhere between, I would say, uh, 70 and no more than 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The pattern that you get, you will see on the water. As you spray, that pattern will start to develop. There are certain things that you can do to manipulate that pattern in your colors. You can drag and twirl and do whatever you want. But typically when you're doing this with spray paint, you're going to get kind of this marbleized pattern. Insert your project in at 45 degrees. I'll show you that and why that's important. When you have the item fully submerged, you don't want to pull it out because there will be paint around the item. You want to have a hand with a glove on it and you're going to get that water out of the way so you're bringing it up through clean water. Finally, you're going to hang dry this and it's not going to be dry for a while. It's going to take, this one I think took three days for it to fully dry, so be prepared for that and make sure that your project is clean, degreased. When you did that sanding and we knocked this down, I also sanded over the rest of the items to make them a little bit more 
uh, adherable for the paint so it's not going straight on a smooth surface. So let's just get into this. I'm just going to use these two colors, kind of a moss green and then a desert tan. And remember, you have black on here, so the black is going to show up. So all you're going to do here is you're going to shake up your paints. Make sure that you shake up your paints good. Don't just do a quick, go to do a good minute per paint upside down. Get all that paint nice and uh, dispersed because what will happen is as it sprays, if it's not properly done, you're going to get paint, water, paint, water, paint, water, and you want to have a, a nice stream of paint. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with this tan and we're going to spray it pretty close to the water. And you'll see how that water starts to take on that paint. This is messy. That's why I put down a drop cloth here. But you see how that paint is starting to develop. Again, you can change the pattern, the spray by moving it around. You want to get a nice good coat of your first color on there. Okay, so we've got our tan on there. Now we're going to introduce our second color is going to be our green and you'll start to see the pattern develop here as the water starts to close in okay so now we have that we're going to add a little bit more tan to this allow the water to kind of do its magic you can adjust this slightly you can see we can make it a little swirly you can add some green into that and you're gonna look for the area that has the pattern you like. And for us, I think right here looks really good. So again, going in at a 45 degree angle and slowly, we're going to dip this in. And you'll see the paint will stick directly to your piece. And you can see we're going slow. Give that paint, if you rush this, you're gonna get spots. The paint's not gonna adhere. Okay, now that we've got it in, I'm going to give it a little twirl, get that paint out of the way, and bring it up. And you can see, there's our pattern. It's got a little bit of the black, and that's it. It's that easy, guys. And then all we're going to do at this point is hang this, let it dry, and we're going to have a nice kind of funky pattern here. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's all dried up. So once you've let that dry for a good period of time you're going to want to get a microfiber cloth maybe you have some rough spots or anything like that just give it a nice little rub down uh, to get it all nice and even and you will end up with something like this now this is the final result so remember what we did we cut the finger well off we sanded that all down. We stippled the grip. And then we painted it using the hydro dip method. And this now went from that nasty, cheesy, cheap grip that we all have laying around to something that looks totally unique and pretty cool. The stippling still has texture to it. Uh, it's not super aggressive because we knocked it down with that sandpaper and it just feels really good. And just to show you, this is kind of what it looks like. And I think that looks really, really nice. You still have little bits of the black, the tan, the green. It's predominantly green, right? Sometimes you just, it, it turns out the way it turns out. Uh, you could, I guess, get some spray paint and use a cotton ball and maybe dab bits and pieces on here if you wanted to adjust the coloring a little bit. That would be no problem. To go from that nasty grip to something like this that feels good, it looks good, it is totally repurposed into something new. You can do it, you guys. It didn't take me long. The longest thing was the drying time. Everything else... I had done in inside of an hour. You be the judge. 
Do you think it's worth the effort to do it? I would say absolutely yes. If at anything, you learn how to stipple, which is pretty good to have. You can, this can be used on anything, stippling. I'm going to finish it with that. I hope you learned something today in what you can do with these guys. So until next time, make sure that you all are practicing safe weapons handling and treating every weapon as if it was loaded. God bless America. G2 out.